politics. <laughs> oh, impressive. <laughs> You're like the reverse tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. Sydney likes it. <laughs> my wife brought this one up because we were at karaoke one night and somebody sang this for karaoke oh, really? and we laughed our asses off <laughs> they didn't have many lines to remember there's, there's only one word yeah, that's what i'm saying <laughs> Oh, it was a good way to uh, to mix in Commander Smiths and that. That's <laughs> that was the easiest one yet. Although that was pretty good. Uh, to, to, I put a lot of work into this, to, Adam. To spoil a little bit behind the scenes stuff, he accidentally started singing this before we even started, and then he quickly stopped. And I was like, "That's your song, isn't it?" He was like, "Damn it! This is the second or third time I've done that." <laughs> Stuck in my head. Uh, so that's Tequila by The Champs. Nice. Yeah, actually, I didn't know who yeah, sang that. I kind of so, figured you yeah. did. Uh, welcome to Commander Smiths. We are the Commander Smiths. I am Mr. Adam Smith. And I am definitely Mrs. just, I'm just Lowry Smith. There's <laughs> no prefix to that. You didn't want a Mr. or Mrs. in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this, oh wait, we're cousins. Huh? We're, cousin, we're, we're cousins. We're cousins. We're cousins. <laughs> we're always going to be cousins. Uh, this is episode 20. Wow. Can you believe that 20. it's already at 20? It's I remember when I turned 20. Do you really? No, That's I had a lot of concussions. Eventful. A lot of concussions. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah, we're moving moving along here. Um Thanks for sticking it out with us. Yeah, we uh got some YouTube list- listeners. What would you say? Listens. What watches? Well, but there isn't any actual video, I know. so they're so still listening. Listening but yeah. watching on YouTube. Um and yeah, what else are we going to say here? Oh, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at Commander Smiths. And you can email us at commandersmiths at gmail.com. And then, like I just said, the YouTube part, so whatever, you can yeah, go there, in there. We subscribe. Do have new, we do YouTube. have some new subscribers yeah. and everything. Uh, yeah, this week's episode, what are we doing this week? Uh, so I, we're going to talk about the big black cards. Core uh, cards for Commander. Sounds a lot better when you're trying to big be BBC. Big black cards. Yeah. <laughs> BBC, big black cards. <laughs> uh, so we'll do <laughs> Gross, CCC Lowry. black. Inappropes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh you would that's... go black <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a choice anymore so it it's, didn't happen uh but uh and then something that's going to be something that we deal with on a basically daily basis we want to talk about like managing your you know magic. your hobbies or your magic addiction addiction <laughs> <laughs> manage <laughs> what it... managing your magic plain hobby like you said yeah hobby with yeah, your hobbies life. and what yeah so you i know. mean a lot's changed for us in the past year um especially you with the new one yep so you've had to juggle that around you've so had we're to gonna, uh, work with it for you know a couple years yeah now. and then we added so. the podcast in, so that actually adds another dynamic to it so that's kind of something we're going to yeah. discuss so you guys might not be as addicted as we are but you know us doing a podcast kind of shows that we're probably too into it <laughs> so but yeah we'll we'll discuss that a little bit and then we're gonna get into smith specs of the week nice we didn't you do like it that? together smith specs smecks smith 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 yeah so we'll speckle, finish speckle. it off with smith specs and uh yeah that should be today's episode but uh let's dive right into let's just start what we were just talking about basically yeah yeah you're right how how our lives work with how we fit in magic. So with you, you had a newborn. Uh, what is little Lowry? Uh, yeah. He's what nine months? He's he's just under nine months right now. He just started crawling. Uh oh! And danger, danger, and, yeah, all that stuff. And you you watch him grow, and you want to be there as much as possible. I'm kind of a I'm a, kind of a stay at home dad while doing my own business as well. And so along with this podcast i don't have a lot of yeah. time to actually sit down and play so wait we started this after lowry what he's three months old four months yeah, old. yeah lowry was like four months old so yeah, yeah. we got <laughs> well we had the plan but we were ahead of time but then we wanted mm-hmm. to wait and get you into what it was the routine of yeah what, but what that's the heck am i doing and then i gotta figure that out yeah exactly so how, how do you fit it all in like how what does what your kind of schedule look like because i mean you lowry does a lot of 
uh, maintenance on rental properties. He does it. Uh, he helps me out uh, when I used to have a, a couple more that I in the city or where we live. Um, but you help your dad out with rentals. You have some rental properties, so you have to juggle all that yeah. and then fit this all in there. So, like, uh, one one thing that I always – like, a saying that I kind of live by is do what you should to do what you want. Mm-hmm. And so I got to make sure that my business is running. I got to make sure that my family is doing well. Um, I don't want to ignore my friends. I just had one come in from uh, South Africa. He actually is moving back. Oh, nice. And so I got to see him, you know, for the first time in a couple months. And, uh, you know, you, you want to be there for everybody that's important in your life. And you got to kind of categorize where your hobby and magic is going to be. Mm-hmm. And so I do it at every other waking moment possible. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you know, it's it normally you do it evenings, like when little Lowry's to yeah, bed? Yeah, nap, nap time's pretty important. But when he's like, if he's, you know, doing going through a developmental spurt of growth you're just like man i got a half hour and i was sitting there for like 15 minutes of that like just trying to calm him down and he wakes up 20 minutes later you're like oh man i didn't i walked downstairs and had a sandwich and then you're back to like taking care of your kid (laughs) so yeah oftentimes it 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 has me staying up later than i'd like Mm -hmm. um well one thing that i feel like has changed with uh, um you know, and I think a lot of this is with the podcast starting up too, with doing this. We haven't got together as much where we used to do, yeah. try to do like once a month. We'd all try to get together with our normal group. Now our group is kind of Scattered all over and, the place. Yeah. Like we have like multiple people that we're playing with, people that we have just started playing, and some other people that we've met that we played with a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's hard because then we're we're always playing for this podcast too. So that's yeah. like time that we would normally have to play. We're like, okay, what are we going to talk about this week? You know, and all this how, stuff. how are we going to fit in those uh, like the new decks facing off each yep. other? Like, so and, it's and, it's a lot of planning for this. Like once yeah. we get done with this podcast, get it edited. You know, you write up everything for it, and we get all that and published. We have what a couple day period, and then it's on to the next episode. Yeah, you know, generally, you start if, we put, if we put it on on a Monday, Tuesday, I'm generally going. What do you want to do next week? Yeah, and normally I, I don't answer right away because I'm like, I just, just let it breathe, Lowry. Let it breathe. Damn it. <laughs> normally it's like Thursday midday, yeah, and you're like, like okay. how about this? I'm like, I-, I would really like to have had half of this done by now. Um, but yeah, in. I think it's just you, you need to prioritize magic. You got to make sure that you know if you have a wife or a girlfriend that's kind of going, you spend too much time doing yeah. this. It, it's not necessarily that you're spending too much time. It means that you need to pay a little bit more attention to the ones that you care about. Yeah. Well, and I think in my mind, I think what least. happens with us is then when we do get together to play magic, we play for a long time. Typically, like yeah, we'll we, start. We'll, we'll put it. We put in a twelve-hour shift. Yeah, we definitely. And that's not a joke. We do like twelve hours where we'll start at. at 12 in the afternoon and finish at midnight well we've gone three four well, yeah o'clock. but but if we're starting at four we're generally ending at three four yeah o'clock. Like, exactly it, generally we want to get some really good games in yeah so we take advantage of when we actually get commander in and whatever um and now it's more of the in-betweens we're building all these new decks be- yeah. for the podcast and then playing those out so that's actually been kind of nice that's been more short bursts that we've had with this and everything yeah. yeah it's a lot less time like we're putting in like two three hours when we're trying to test out the decks a yeah. little bit so um, how do you fit in this podcast much less the, the, two, the greater yeah you have two. two kids yeah so i'm a similar boat as lowry like i'm kind of a stay-at-home dad i am um, but i sell real estate um yeah as part of my business i also own rental properties and vacation properties that i manage and rent out uh, but that's how i'm able to stay at home so we have a three and a half year old I drop him off at daycare three days a week and then our one and a half year old he stays with me and for the most part I can handle it. He's starting to get to that point where I can't. Uh, how my days Be, being able to balance work and and him you know care and, and the thing is is the reason why the three year and a half year old is at daycare is we want interaction with other kids you know we went <laughs> yeah it was a, when yep. he was almost two or around two we went to a playground and he one of those indoor playgrounds where mm-hmm. it's like tons of tubes and everything he's Chuck up at the cheese. top and just started screaming because there were other kids coming up and he didn't know <laughs> what to do because he hadn't had any interaction I with don't want to play with you <laughs> he's like I don't what do I do and so we're like oh, we got to get him in daycare because this is bad because we had to crawl hit them, <laughs> hit them so they go away yeah. <laughs> just start punching the air and kicking yeah. the air it's uh, you learn that on the Simpsons at a yeah, young that's age that's exactly where I was <laughs> from Lisa and Bart doing yeah. that. Yep. <laughs> so 
that you know him being in daycare so i guess how my day consists of that is i drop him off or even if i have him during the day uh, my day starts off with if i have sales that need to go out stuff that i've sold on ebay or whatever Mm -hmm. i deal with that in the morning then i get to my emails with my other work my real estate and vacation stuff get all that done and then if there's stuff I'll, I'll interact with ebay or look at specs or i'll be talking with you throughout the day so it's intermittent throughout the day but then i don't hit it again until the boys are back to sleep and then i get back to yeah you know either getting our podcast ready um editing the podcast oh that's the other thing editing the podcast happens normally in the morning when the boys first get yeah, up the, and i'm making break yep yep we so record. it's 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 hard but you know i used to i have a like sharing a whole bunch of crap with this but i have a climbing wall in my garage Mm -hmm. i used to climb on that four days a week you know now because of the podcast and planning i try to get out there once a week if i can i mean that's a good goal like yeah that's one thing i I talked with my my wife about it because if you guys don't have kids it's actually quite exhausting like it's not anything that i expected that i I was going to be able to go and work a lot easier now i'm begging people to babysit i was just like or or i gotta go out on a sunday and a saturday and take care of stuff um but it's like uh, just this last week, I was I was ornery for the first time in my life. And, your first time of your life, yeah. My normally, ass. Normally, <laughs> normally it's short bursts, but like I was I was ornery for like two three days. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Long time Lowry ornery. Yeah, they and that's like not that. good. Nobody likes that. <laughs> and I was feeling just bad, and then I was just like, you know, I've been active my entire life. You know, I mm-hmm. played football all the way through college. Um, I've always lifted. We did the climbing and. I haven't done anything yeah. in like it feels it probably like a year. Yeah. Well, and I I feel awful. That's one thing physically. too is like you do need to set time for yourself. I think that's what magic is partially. But then my wife you, and I do play volleyball every mm-hmm. week. We've been that's how we actually met. You know, ten no fifteen Aww. years. Oh, cute. I didn't say but yeah, that. we play actually now we play volleyball <laughs> twice a week. Uh, so I fit that in, and then I also play soccer on Sundays. But that's only for the summer. I don't know how long that's going to last because now my oldest is in T-ball at the same time. So it's like, well, I got to mm-hmm. watch him do that. Yeah. So I don't – volleyball we're always going to do because that's something – we have a volleyball net in the backyard, you know, an mm-hmm. actual lined out, you know, everything, whatever, volleyball stuff. But you need to have – that's one thing we've kind of – we're learning with the boys is that you need to set time for yourself health yeah. wise whatever exercise wise i don't care about myself so that's fine <laughs> but one thing that i was thinking like if i was going to pick up something that i definitely just like have pretty much stopped doing is like i really don't watch tv anymore mm-hmm. um and that's the thing that really it has weird. given me a lot more time yeah <laughs> um it is weird because i don't even watch I, I always used to make it uh a point to like catch the news or something like that and it's like ugh. oh i'd rather well i mean just just yeah, yeah. for something to know what's going on and set, but you know, you have the internet now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't, my shows that I want to watch HBO stuff. Of course I'm caught up on game of Thrones, but yeah, game of Thrones, game of Thrones, obviously, Thrones obviously, obviously, game of Thrones, <laughs> more nudes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Like something has to be incredibly good right out the gate for me to even watch the second show. If I'm even sitting down and watching something. Yeah. So, you know, what's funny. The way we get through watching a show on like Netflix and stuff hmm. is when we fold clothes. Oh, <laughs> we, so bring we, all, just, we have like <laughs> seven baskets of, clothes we do all of them at once we have all the boys stuff our stuff and then we'll fold for like two hours and put stuff away but then you get you go through like uh a show and so it actually we watched uh what was it santa clarita diet with a drew barrymore one my wife says that's really good it's pretty funny i I just did podcast stuff the entire time she was watching it (laughs) so but yeah so like that was a way to we were double tasking you know we had Mm -hmm. to get it done anyways but um but yeah for magic wise this has become like when the boys are down, wife's going to bed. Yeah. I'm always, you know, this now I'm like researching, getting stuff ready, whatever, specking, um, building decks, yeah. putting cards away. You know, it's, there's so organizing much. cards is just to have oh like God. it's time consuming as is. And, and you just, you, if you don't get on top of it, they just start to build up yeah. more and more. You know, I have, have like two boxes sitting there that I need to start putting <laughs> you're, away. You're, yeah. I'm getting I'm, behind. <laughs> you, you, that sounds like work. Yeah. Um, like, and I was just thinking about like the time where I was just like, I want magic to be my 
my hobby Mm -hmm. is uh like it was back when like guitar hero was really big and i was just out of college i didn't really have a job and most everything i was doing i was just like guitar hero into magic into guitar hero into going out and drinking (laughs) and like that sounds like that sounds like an awesome life life. yeah but i was like uh (laughs) my my dad always uh like uh, has a little saying he's like you're only allowed three vices in your life otherwise you're just going to go broke yeah. and not do anything and so i was like well if i want to go out and drink play video games and play magic play magic i'm not going to be able to do anything else <laughs> yeah. and so like i cut out you know he's like women's advice like you want if you want them da 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 like so and it was real like i didn't have any time to actually cultivate like relationships and stuff mm-hmm. like that so i cut out video games and i was really you, good at he was hero. larry was a pretty good guitar hero player so i uh, was amazeballs I, I just cut out video games and you know i, I made sure you know I, I enjoyed playing magic and building decks and all that stuff uh and then Obviously, I didn't cut drinking. <laughs> so, and hey, then, speaking and of then family, drunk, let's have a beer. Oh, we could do that. <laughs> uh, this one, <laughs> I, I just I saw it sitting there. I'm like, ah, oh, we got it. We got to try that. So, I got the cup out and everything. I, I'm actually not sure if you're going to like this one, but uh, it's from Stone, which is a very good brewery out in California. It's called Fear Movie Lions. It's a double IPA. Mm. The wife so. would like that more than I would. <laughs> <laughs> she has a better palate. Yeah. Uh, but as you're pouring that, so one thing with magic though is the finance part has become part of it's it's like a business part for me, you know. So that is kind of my work, you know. Like the same thing where you're saying the three vices is, you know, if you can have three strings of income, typically. Oh, thank you by yeah. the way. Let's oh, try this. Cheers. Sip. That's not bad. I'm glad that you like it. <laughs> See. I like stuff that's a little, it's, you don't down it, you know? Otherwise, if, yeah, you know, yeah. like Nordeast, I can just put that down easily. But stuff like this makes it so I just sip on you it have and to take it. my time. I like that. Um, thank you, Larry. You're welcome. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so speaking with the three vices, the three strings of income, magic is finance-wise is starting to become more of that for yeah. me. Um, and actually, I take... Forty percent of what I sell, and I put it in our joint, my mine and my wife's joint account savings, mm-hmm. and so that's starting to build up in itself. So it's actually becoming more of part of my business, and I treat it that way. So my sales, you know, um, like I said, I get my sales out as quick as possible and everything. So it is a part of my life, and I actually have to research not only for the podcast, but it's actually money wise making Using, money. Yeah, like I've always looked at it like you're basically you you spend a lot on magic, but you almost do it for free because you're able to sell enough mm-hmm. to fulfill. And, and like you're saying, you're actually putting it into savings and stuff like that too, which is really cool. And I do it a different way. You trade, we, your trading works I, well I do though. trading. Yeah. And so I've always been able to trade and I, I tend to, you know, I think a lot of people know this, but the idea of you trade up, but I'm not trading shitty cards. Yeah. They're still good cards, but, you, you I spec have on the card them. and it jumped up and then you trade that away. So you yeah. you got it for cheap and then now you're trading it for yeah. a higher price that, card at that point. That's pretty much what I do. Yeah. So you, you're kind of doing the, the same thing. You're just getting a card in return. I'm just getting the money and then going and yeah. finding where I want to invest the money. So, but yeah, uh, it's interesting. You make it work. Um, but there is, there is really a, a reason why they call this game cardboard crack. Like, yeah. No, you you get so, you can really get into it deep in, and I think you just want to make sure that you're you're controlling it a little bit. Yeah, I think the finance part makes it even more so, like specking on stuff. Yeah, because it's a really expensive yeah uh, game as well. That like there is so much so twenty five years of cars that you can choose from. Yeah, and you can just be building everything and anything that you kind of want and have the creativity to do. Yeah, and so it's it can. I've been doing this for ten years and I'm still making new decks that I've never, you know, kind of explored that idea. So the the nice thing though I will say is ever since we decided to do the and I've said it before but the making the proxies of cards we own and not having to make so many, you know, buy so many cards that has helped yeah. so much financially for us. I would agree with that because as well. we can build multiple decks and just make the the nice proxies that we make. And they actually look good. It doesn't like shitty, <laughs> shitty yeah. looking cards. We actually make these cards look and like it, full and art. And it's helped legit diversify shots. like the collection too, because yeah. you don't need four to six of a yeah. certain card. You just 
you can get one or two of an expensive card and then proxy it. Yeah. And things like that. And so. we only we do play sets because, you know, we do dabble in modern every now and then. And so yeah. certain cards will be like, ah, that one I, I can see maybe building a deck. I'll have four mm-hmm. of that card. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's about it for. Yeah, I think I, I said everything that I kind of thought of while we were talking about it because I, I prep. You prep. <laughs> I was I was going to, and I was like, ah, I, I just like to wing it. I knew kind of we'll some it, yeah. some points that I wanted to talk about, if, uh, and that's kind of how. And if there's any like tips or tricks that uh, people out there in Twitterland have, Twitterland, um, you like do a shout out. Say this is kind of how I manage yeah. my addiction with my addiction. magic. <laughs> it's an addiction. <laughs> Get it through your head. Hey, they did just recently. Uh, what um what's the word i'm trying to say they mm. not solidify but they uh, their video game addiction is a legit thing now oh is it yeah like they oh. are actually saying that it, it, it there are a small percentage of people have an actual addiction to video games i can see the same thing and you can just, be addicted pretty much and to then anything. the other larger percentage of video game players online are just dicks <laughs> <laughs> huge dicks just <laughs> not even the bbc kind just Oh, you and the BBCs. Hey, I feel like it's on theme. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of BBCs, mm. let's move on to our BBCs. Our core <laughs> cards for Commander. Was I supposed to join in on yeah, that one? Yeah, that's you why I kind of went slow. slow. I, I went... thought we were, just did that for Smith Specs. Core cards for Commander Black Edition. Edition, edition. Like the Echo? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. I'm okay uh, with right. that. I'm uh, not going to say don't do it. So where are we going to start off this week? We're going to start... Do we want to start from uh, the top of your list here? Larry got the yeah, list together can... today. and um, This is in no particular no. We're order. Grouping them. Yeah, we're, we're grouping them like that we normally do, but it's not in order of importance. It's just kind of like groups. Well, yeah. So <laughs> why don't we just start off... Well, Crypt Ghast is one that we've talked about for yeah. spec-wise, the foils on this. So this card... It, it doubles the swamps that you have. It's and only this, one black and three, so it's very similar. And a two two, you have extort on it. Extort is I like that part about extort's it. Extort's pretty cool, and that's why I kind of like it. I, I lean more towards that than Nirkana. Um, yeah, there's, but that's also on our list. Yeah, Nirkana Revenant also doubles the black mana that you have, or swamps. Yeah, not just black mana, but swamps. Uh, and those two cards are black mana ramp. The reason why, in in my opinion, Crypt Gas is more important because it's cheaper to come out, and then that allows you to ramp right or like later on. And has a Nir- side effect of gaining life. Yeah, and with Nirkana Revenant, it's like kind of a late game ramp, yeah. which I'm not as big of a fan of. But you you like uh, Zendikar Resurgent, which I I feel like it's a more no, similar late, card too. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and then another one that we we both kind of like is Black Market, which it's is an enchantment. an enchantment. When creatures die, it gets counters, and then your main phase you get to use. Yeah, your how many counters phase. are on uh, that enchantment for Black Mana? Yeah, and you know, in a game of Commander, that can get crazy. Shit dies. Yeah. <laughs> even you know, because it's anybody's be, creatures. It's not just your creatures. So you that's, could be playing Wraths after Wrath and just keep on getting more and more mana. It uh, it's a really powerful card. Yeah. So. Uh, and then we move into more of our animate dead kind of yeah, section. Recursion. Um, so the main one we want to talk about is Phyrexian Reclamation. Yep. And that one is the enchantment, right? It's one, an enchantment. One black, one colorless. No, one black enchantment. Oh, it's just one. Black. And then you That's pay right. a yep. colorless and a black There's and two where life. I was and then you get to return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, it's pretty badass. I I put this in just about every black deck. Yeah. Um, it's it's cheap. It's you can uh, do it multiple times in a turn, and you know it's a permanent, so it stays in play. And it's an I, I enchantment. Think, Most people don't have a lot of enchantment yeah, removal. So there might be mass enchantment removal, but you didn't have a lot of investment into it. Well, and that's the thing is, even if they go to destroy it the first turn, you technically can use it right away. You know, if you, yeah, you, you if can you stack creature, it, boom, 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 pull stuff back. So, yeah, I think that's good. But then going along with that same idea, animate dead. That's kind of the original. Uh, yeah, it's original aura. gangsta. It's a graveyard aura. Yeah, you know, graveyard enchantment. I can't remember the original. And that's wording. very similar to necromancy. And then we also have dance of the dead on there. Now the game winner, which we were kind of discussing beforehand, yeah. for black here. You know, you have your blue with cyclonic rift, and what do we have already? We had green with um, um, crater hoof. Crater hoof. And then what was our? 
Did we do... That was our only two colors, so we're on our well, third. Well, we did artifacts, but yeah. that's more there, of a yeah. utility. So this Rise of the Dark Realms is the, the game winner for yeah. black, and it's two black seven colorless? I believe it's seven, yeah. And total. it's return all creatures from all graveyards to play under your control. And, and it's that's game ending. Yeah, that's It's, it's permanent. <laughs> you get to keep it. It's, in my mind, better than Insurrection. It's just... I've only got to cast this once, and it got countered. <laughs> good, <laughs> Fucking counters. Good deal. Yeah, I, I it think was that's appropriate. Game over there, and then counter spells. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. And I, I mean, whenever, uh, if I'm watching somebody stream and they, they play this card in Commander, you're like, holy crap. They, you know, like the computer bogs down because they have so many <laughs> creatures on their yeah. side. And it's amazing card and so. then a couple on in this uh others in this section is dread return um and then whip of erebos is our other one which is um another recur- that's an enchantment artifact yeah, yeah. it gives, gives all life your creatures link. life link and then you can pay two colorless two red uh <laughs> two <good> black <laughs> two colorless two black tap it and then put a creature from your graveyard into play with haste and then you remove it from the game at end of turn yeah the 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 god whips are or the god armor or weapons are all pretty sweet. Most of them are pretty decent. I'm okay with them. You're I don't okay. play them a whole time. No, I, the, I like the black one the best. Isn't the blue one the unblockable one? Ah, we're not talking about that. Let's yeah, get away from it. Yeah, what are you that. doing? <laughs> Just getting off topic. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about better cards. The blue. Blue's Let's talk always about better. Other colors and everything. <laughs> uh, so then we get into, what are we on next? Our draw? Yeah, our draw. Like, Phyrexian Arena is a fantastic enchantment draw card. Yep. So it's just two black colorless enchantment. During your upkeep, you draw, draw a card, card and lose, lose a life. life. Consistent, always going to happen. If you get this early game, you're going to be so far ahead. That lo- that loss of life is totally worth it. Same thing as a creature form is Blood Gift Demon does the exact... Or you can actually make a player. You pick the player. So yep. you technically could have somebody else if they're at one. And that's a 5-4 flyer, too. So it's a beat stick for five. It's, it's well worth it. And then what else do we have here? We have Necropotence. Uh, Necropotence is a great card. Uh, if you don't have it, I, I'd say buy that broken card. And so, then Erebos and Greed. Yeah. So and those Erebos and Greed are very similar cards. It's just uh, basically pay a black or a black and a colorless, pay two life and draw a card. And, and you can repeat. A, uh, keep doing it. Yeah, keep doing that. And then uh, kind of going with our draw, there's still a little subsection to this. So we have three cards that you, you cast and you draw cards. Um, the main one we want to talk about is read the bones. And that's it's one black and one colorless. One black and two colorless. Two colorless. Uh, scry two, draw two, lose two life. Yep. And that's I like this one the best yeah. between because the scrying or, ability is pretty ridiculous, and then being able to set it up to draw yeah. what you there, want. There's also sign and blood and knight's whisper, which is draw two, pay two life. Yeah, uh, and then we get into our is that our destruction? No, uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Outlets. Outlets. Okay, so we have um attrition do, yeah i'll do attrition uh that's an enchantment that's one colorless two black that is one i think that should be in almost every deck it, but you, yeah, it's you really can't great. You, you destroy target non-black creatures yep. so, so it's pay one black sacrifice a creature destroy target non-black creature and that's uh it's yeah it's yeah. really good it helps you deal with almost everything that isn't black yep <laughs> uh and then you have Vasir seer is that am i saying that right Vasira. I, I I say viscera. viscera, viscera, yeah, viscera seer, and that's um, one black, one color. I'm trying to get it off memory. One black, one one. Oh, it's just one black. Yeah. All right, sacrifice and you sacrifice a creature, and you scry one. There's no tapping or anything, so you can sacrifice multiple things yep. without tapping to do it. So this this is, I use this quite a bit actually in my mm-hmm. my decks with sacrificing and drawing and all that. Not drawing, but it's a good way to set it's, your deck it's up. Cheap. It's a sacrifice outlet. And yeah. It gets you a lot of value if they're you know wiping the board. You just sack, scry sack, to the card yeah. that you want. Yeah, and this actually works well. There's a modern deck that I built with this bad boy doing mm-hmm. that, being able to set my top up. Uh, and then we get into our when your creatures die effect, kind of gaining life, losing life. Um, the main one we want to talk about is blood. Uh, artist which is the cheapest and the best one i think to use yeah um it's a zero one for a a black and a colorless and whenever a creature goes into the graveyard uh target opponent loses a life and you gain a life uh and then simple and sweet 
The similar one is Zulaport Cutthroat, and then then are, there is there, there's another one. Then there's the Vampire Duder, <laughs> no, which is what my notes are. We both, I we both what knew what it was. It's one black and three colors for a a vampire that flies. Two flyer. And it does the same thing, but we could not think of the name. <laughs> so like, we should have maybe actually looked for it when we. We're going through our we list here. We put so much work into this. I don't have to find a vampire <laughs> duder. You know what I mean. Go get it. Van- so when you, you want to goldfish this, you go on, on goldfish <laughs> and put in vampire <laughs> duder, and you will totally You'll find probably this Probably get that. Yeah, there there is. he is. Uh, Falcon Wrath Noble. There we go. Totally. Told you. <laughs> Super cheap to get him. I mean, it's for, for casting to get him out, but he does the same thing where uh, <laughs> target player loses a life and you gain a life. So those three are pretty nice, especially because you're doing a lot of sacking with black a lot of times with attrition any of that kind of stuff where you gain life and make people lose life is always a bonus yeah yeah um so then what do we get into next are we going into just our crazy old red the whispering this one one, i play this one more often than not and this one scares it's it's a praetor and all of them scare the crap out of everybody ridiculous so this one basically what it does is when At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to bring a creature back from your graveyard to play. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of your opponent's upkeep, they each have to sacrifice a creature. And it has Swamp Walk. And it's a big fucker. (laughs) That's offensive. (laughs) Why would you call her a fucker? She's Phyrexian. She doesn't have the... Well, now we're calling her a she. Well, I, I think it's a she. She has the lady parts. Are we trying to find her, or do we just want to go no, to... No, I don't care. Okay. So that's, yeah, she's pretty badass. If, if you got the cash, if you got the dough, go yeah. get her. Uh, one that I feel like we are starting to use more is... And I like to call him obnoxious, but... <laughs> Obnixilus. Yeah, I like <laughs> calling him obnoxious. But the unshackled, he's pretty badass, and actually, cool. Lowry killed himself with this guy... I did. Multiple times? Probably. <laughs> so I... Okay, so I put obnoxious and we've told this story before unshackled. i know we've Have told we? this on this yeah that you've okay. killed yourself but you go ahead somebody and copied it, it somebody else copied it and then i went and searched and lost 20 life and then somebody else had something that made you lose the amount of life that you lost, lost that, that turn. turn and actually I lost 40 in a turn and so a really quick what he is he's and we're going to say the casting co- well what he is is he's a 4-4 flying trample whenever an opponent searches their library that player loses 10 life whenever a creature dies put a counter 1-1 one, one counter on that part doesn't matter it's the searching part so Lowry searched yeah and then actually we went two people after him and then he's like oh shit i'm dead and we're like yeah. what <laughs> like i went and searched and there's two copies of it because i think i had one and somebody else had one i had copied yeah. somebody's yep so you <laughs> you killed you killed yourself i killed myself and i killed myself again either before or after that game different different situation yeah just not paying attention because it was like a seven person game yeah but uh and then uh our friend trombley came up with a card like made it specifically for me called suicidal tendencies it was awesome <laughs> it was you got a funny. picture and put it all together it was a pretty <laughs> sweet card but yeah so this card i feel is pretty good because especially if your play group plays with a lot of tutors Tutor. this can be very damaging i mean 10 life every time you search like that's even going to search for a land when you're i think that's how you killed yourself wasn't yeah, it I, went, you, I, I think I, you had a yeah. fetch land and you went and searched for a basic yep or not basic the duel or whatever and Lowry dead. <laughs> I was just like, well, that was not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we move into, speaking of tutors. To our actual tutors that uh, we think that you should probably go and get. Um, the main one to talk about is the original gangster, which is... Demonic I, tutor. I've used original gangster twice in this episode. It's stupid. Why don't you just say OG? Everybody knows what you mean. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so that's just one black, one colorless. Go search for any card and put it in your hand. Sorcery. Yeah. And Vampiric Tutor is the same thing, only it goes on top of your library and you pay two life. Yeah. And then and, and it's black in an instant. So it's not the same thing. In but, creature form you, form, you have... Wait, what did you say? No. <laughs> no you'll, you'll hear it in I the... I it in the, that's, Sometimes I do that. Like, <laughs> I'm going to the next card and I'm not even hearing what you're saying. And then when I'm re-listening to it, I'm like, fuck, I missed that. Larry said something funny there and I didn't even catch that at all. I didn't react or anything. Uh, but... Ruin Scarred Demon is the same thing as uh, Demonic Tutor in creature form. Uh, so, yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five flying when it comes into play. Search for any card put in your hand. 
And then Sadisi, Undead Vizier, is the same thing, only you got to sacrifice a creature for the effect to happen. And that's the same thing for, uh, well, the sacrificing uh, Diabolic into, Intent yeah. is also sacrificing to get a creature, or go find a card. And then you have Beseech the Queen, which allows you to go and search for a card of any converted mana cost equal to the amount of lands that you have in play. And then one card we... Uh, one of the newer cards that we both agreed that should is on the list for this is uh, Razakath. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Razakath is the foul blooded. Is the uh, the one where you pay? Uh, no, is it sacrifice? Sacrifice a creature, pay two, two life, life, search for any card, put it in put your, in your hand. hand, and that's pretty bonkers in this. Yeah, he's a he's an eight eight flying trampler for I want to say eight to ten somewhere in that range. Yeah. Um. So and he's. Really, I, I think he's a really solid card, and I think he'll be used more and more because he's a great like reanimator target. And oh, backing up really quick, Rune Scarred is a six six, not a five five. Not that so it's I, better than yeah. I, was <laughs> I thought it was a five six, so that's why I was actually wanting to check. I was like, oh, I just want to make sure that we had that right. But yeah, so he's a six six. It doesn't he doesn't have trample or anything? But it's he's a badass. I mean, he's he's amazing in Kalia the Vast. Like, oh, you attack, yeah. put that into play, yeah. attacking, go, go search, for, search for any <laughs> angel, dragon, or demon, yeah. <laughs> and then the next turn you're doing it again. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it for the our tutors, right? Tutor. Yeah. Moving on to uh, Grave Pact, which is... I I like this effect I a use, whole ton. Yeah, I use this so, a lot. Uh, Grave Pact is one colorless, three black for an enchantment, and then whenever you have a creature go into your graveyard... Each opponent sacrifices a creature as well. Yeah, I use this it's, with the uh, slime foot as my part of it. And yep, then the, the creature form of it is your butcher of uh, Malakar. Yep. Yep. And then what is yeah, our other one? Dictate of Erebos is, is your the same flash thing. ability. It has of flash, but it's an enchantment. enchantment. Yeah. So those are all pretty awesome. This, like we were talking about black. You're sacking a lot of stuff a lot of times. Yep. Even if you're not sacking stuff. People aren't going to attack you if you have a little chump blockers, and they know that if they kill your chump blockers, that their stuff's going to die too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really powerful effect. Like I I had them in like Yahini Undying Partisan, my that deck, mm -hmm. and so that deck was supposed to have like tokens, and then um, you're sacrificing them to Yahini however much you want and then people are just getting rid of all your their creatures which makes you any bigger yeah then you just swing in and it's they're they're amazing cards and the other two are going to be dictate and grave pact are a little spendy on the spendy side but you can pick up the i mean they've re reprinted butcher, butcher and Malachar Malachar has been super printed. cheap but there's only one foil printing just so you know that is one of my <laughs> specs uh not in the, the specs yeah it's one of my specs in the past i don't think i talked about it on an episode but i did buy into 10 of those for pff, dirt cheap but anyways uh on then planeswalkers we'll, yeah um do you want to go with your mean one that you what did Soren Markov? Oh, I have to remember all the abilities. Is this the one that make uh, your life ten? I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important. Part. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the only the, one that matters. The dick move, but we do it all the time. <laughs> so it's yeah, you you land Soren Markov, which is three colorless, three black, comes into play, and you're just like, yeah, your, your life, life is totals ten, 10. <laughs> and that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. And that's then you can let them die. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then. The uh, Liliana, the Vest is your main thing there is kind of your tutor, but you can make people discard. Yeah, you right? can yeah. you can plus it to have them discard. You can minus it to put a card from your library on top, and then the ultimate is impossible. And then the other one is the Dark Realms of Liliana. This one I really like a lot, too. Like how I said it the other way? I kind of yeah. did it like uh, Lord of the Rings where you say their last name first and then the first name like that. Get it? Yeah. Kind of? You're no. such a <laughs> <laughs> he only brought up Lord of the Rings because I told you it was going to be a TV show. Yeah, I'm, I'm freaking amped for that. That's <laughs> sweet. Well, the thing is, is Game of Thrones is also going to keep going. Uh, you know, Westworld well, kind of, of Westworld kind of stunk this season. I guess I I didn't I watched last season. I've but, heard it's fine. I haven't uh, watched either. The last season kind of didn't do too well. I, I got to get caught up on that. But um, Game of Thrones, yeah, they're going to keep doing the side stories of all that stuff. So I'm game for that. Anyways, back to magic. <laughs> Yeah, sidetrack. <laughs> I like Liliana of the Dark Realms because it's a very unique card. In you get to go and search for a swamp from your library and put it into your hand, mm -hmm. and that's just 
that's the only card in black that I can think that does that. It's a, it's a green thing. Yeah. And this allows you to go and get any swamp. And I'm pretty sure. With, dual lands. Yeah, shock lands. You, yeah. Dual land shock lands. If you have. Cycle uh, lands. Herborg tomb of Yawgmoth in. Mm, search for I anything. I believe you can search for yep, any you're land. Right. So, it, yeah. And then it has other abilities, but in my opinion, it's go get a swamp. Yeah. This is, and it's, it's a pretty legit commander to, or commander. Planeswalker to come. I mean, it's only four. She doesn't oh, have a lot of casting. I cost. forgot to. So they did make an announcement, like, uh, for the next commander set because they're going to do an announcement mid July. I think it's the seventeenth specifically, but they've already kind of spoiled that the next one is going to be Planeswalker focused. They didn't oh, specifically the state next it. commander. Yeah, the oh. next commander. They didn't specifically state that it was Planeswalkers, but they're like, and you can summon Planeswalkers to your side. Ah. And so that's, I mean, a lot of people are thinking that it's plane wa- Planeswalkers and probably multicolored as well. That would be sweet. Yeah, I'd so be very happy So back to the Planeswalkers that. again. It's still going to be only four decks, but um, it'll be interesting to see what they actually announce here in the next couple weeks. Oh, no, I'm really excited. Psyched. I just got a commander boner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, then uh, we so get a 100-card boner. <laughs> speaking of boners and getting off, we get off our commander, or, uh, our what? planeswalkers, and we move on to <laughs> our sack. No, yeah, your sack. Uh, creatures that are easily recurrable. Uh, and basically that's Bloodgast, uh, Reassembling Skeleton, and then Warrior Dude. <laughs> I forgot which one it was, uh, but that one, it's from the cons block, and it has, I don't even want to go search for it. I, we're we're keeping them on there, Warrior so, Duder. So, <laughs> we took the time to go research it, even though we knew that was in block, there. And then whenever uh, you have a creature that attacks, you can pay a black and a colorless to bring it back from your grave. Oh yeah, Warrior Duder. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Type it in. You got it. We have wait, Warrior Duder, and what was the other one? Vampire Duder. Vampire Duder, which we found out was Falcon Wrath Noble, which is perfectly fine. Look, you shouldn't leave me to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> I was camping but, this weekend. So, so you, so basically, the thought behind this is you have creatures that are easily sacrificable, or like, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, it. You're doing so you it on use, purpose. Yeah, and then they're coming back easy. You for can use whatever. your Razaketh to go sacrifice so this, creature. go get it, then bring that back and yep. yeah, keep doing grave it. pact yep. effects. Yeah, and uh, it's. Numerous, numerous things. So I, I highly suggest at least having the two cheaper ones in your uh, your collection. And then we move into, speaking of your graveyards, Entomb and Buried Alive is our next getting your stuff basically into your graveyard so yep. you can bring them back. Mm-hmm. And Entomb um, is any card, too. Yeah. Uh, Buried Alive is any three creatures. Yeah. And so it works really well in any deck that you're playing from your graveyard. And then our next section is just kind of a random supply of stuff don't you think yeah you're welcome <laughs> uh arch fiend of depravity uh depravity De- yeah sure Depravity. Uh, i actually don't know what that one that it's one's a, it's a five four for five with flying and w- at the end of each uh opponent's end step they sacrifice all of their creatures oh, but two of two. them that's right we had talked about that and so that one's i mean sometimes it's not super powerful if they're just playing just a couple really powerful creatures mm-hmm. but it destroys token decks and really uh, makes it, – it's a powerful play. People uh, don't like them. Yeah. And then Grave Titan is, I think, one of the weaker of the, the Titans, of the ones that are used a lot. I uh, disagree. I mean, it gives you, what, two two zombies? Yeah. And when he attacks, he also gets that – he also has, what, Death Touch? 6-6 six, six Death, Death Touch, touch. For 6. I'm not saying – I like all the Titans, so that's – I actually, I think white is my the weakest one for me. I don't use that one white's, ever. White's also really good. Green's the well, weakest I mean, in commander me, I don't because use it's that banned. One. Yeah, green's my favorite. <laughs> green, green is amazing, green but is it, is, it is banned for a reason. Because <laughs> even when we had the... When we started actually going to the ban list, I was very reluctant to not to take my Grave Titans, or my Prime Evils Prime out. Ones, but, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no! Because I want to get my gayest cradle. Why would you do this to me, wizards? <laughs> well, it's not even wizards that does it, but whatever. Yeah. Um, well, they're wizards <laughs> so, in my uh, heart. So Grave Titan is awesome. One that I really like um, is Kalita's Traitor of Get. Uh, it's from Oath of the Gatewatch, but it's two colorless, two black. It's a 3-4 life linker. Whenever an opponent's creature dies, you put a 2-2 zombie into play, and then you can pay two colorless and a black to sacrifice it a uh, vampire or zombie to put two one one counters on Kalidas. Um, he just does so much for mm-hmm. you. I feel like he's a great value play and cheap enough to really kind of 
come down before a lot of creatures are starting to die. Yeah. He's a legendary creature, so he could be your commander as well. And he gets bigger as the game goes, if you so wish. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think he does a whole ton for you. And then our last one on that is, what is it? Gray, Gray, Gray Mer- Merchant of Asphodel. What does that one do? Actually, they call it Gary, but he's uh, um, so he's five mana one. for like a two four, and when it comes into play, each opponent loses life to the amount of swamp or like swamp mana oh, symbols yeah, it's you the have. Devotion to yeah, and then you gain that much life. Gotcha. And yeah. so he's you know he's a blinker, he's a you know, recur him. Uh, you want multiple triggers off this guy. Panharmonicon is amazing oh, yeah. with him. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. He does a lot of really cool things. Uh, and now we get into our board removal. You kind of get into your main one, Damnation, or the Decree of Pain, which Decree of Pain is the minus X, minus X, right? No. no is that the... It's destroy all creatures and draw a card for each oh, creature. Oh, no, I'm destroyed. thinking of... What are we thinking of? Toxic Deluge is the yeah. minus X, minus X. For yeah, for as much life, life as you pay. Yeah. I like Toxic Deluge because you get to uh, control yeah, wh- which creatures to die. Wh- like, yeah, if you have a big enough thing to survive it, you can kill everybody else's or, you know. Or if you, it, basically it's like who has the biggest creature on the board. And if they're like, I have a 6-6, six, six, you're like, yeah. well, let's kill everything. Uh, one of the more unique ones than the new ones, and it actually was my spec a couple weeks ago, is Torment of Hailfire. That one, I want to see used. We haven't used it in I've, our I've Commander games. I've had it used games. against me. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. So that one is the two black and X, and then whatever X is. You, you, you get c- to discard cards or pay three, pay three life, life or sacrifice a permanent. A non-land permanent. So you can't do land is the part where it, that's too bad. Yeah, because <laughs> that would be a little easier to. But you, it could really wipe well, you out yeah, if you get this late game. I mean, it's or even, a really good card. I highly suggest going out and getting it. Yeah, um, and probably then, after rotation here, but it's really good. Yeah, uh, and then we got what left on our kill stuff. Uh, Ingaruk's Wake just destroys all opponents' creatures for I, I believe it's nine mana. So that's uh, one sided board wrath. Yeah, I think it's worth it in the end game for yeah. the most part. And then the one that I don't want to even read. Oh, ex- Exsanguinate. <laughs> I was going to guess. Exsanguinate <laughs> is uh, two black and X, and then X is, has each opponent lose X life, and then you gain, gain that the much. amount of life that was lost between all opponents. So so if you if you if X four players, six, you do it's six, six, six. Yeah. Oh, look at Sign you. Of the devil. Look at you. <laughs> but you're uh and then you gain like 18 life. So it's it's a huge swing. Mm-hmm. Um uncommon from Zendikar. Easy pickup. Yeah. Uh and then we move into our sacrifice stuff where they come into play and you kill you sacrifice creatures. So you have your shriek maws, kind of your one of your yeah, main destroys guys. Destroys target non-black creature, uh merciless executioner and fleshbag marauder. Each player, when it come when they come into play, each player sacrifices a creature. Yep. So well worth it. Uh, then we, Nihili b- spell bomb. N- Nihil uh, spell Nihil? bomb. Is that how you say it? Nihili is what no, I said. I don't think it's Nihil. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. There's I think it's Nihilistic, <laughs> and they're shortening it to Nihil. Nihil. Yeah. Uh, so spell bomb. It removes uh, a graveyard from play, and you can pay a black to draw a card when it enters the uh, graveyard. So, and then... Um, Massacre Worm is when it comes into play. All Everybody's creatures get minus two, minus two. And for each creature that dies, they lose two life. It, the opponents, yeah, lose, lose two, two, two life. life. Um, um, that can be brutal if you're going against a token deck. Yeah, that's a, that's a board wipe for token decks a lot of the time. And then we got Kashuda... Kush. Kakusho. Kakusho. I love this one. I love that the they Evening unbanned Star. it because it used to be banned in it was, Commander. Yeah, because essentially they... Um, they were like, that's too, too much commander. life that's being lost and you could, you know, you can mess with this one. You can sacrifice. You've done it. I've You've sacrificed it, brought it back, done, you know, yeah. multiple times. But it's I tricky. I have that in my Marcel deck. Yeah. Yeah. So that's every time it leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses five life and for each amount... Uh, yeah of life lost you gain that so it's it's very similar to uh gray merchant of asphodel and exsanguinate mm-hmm. got it nice <laughs> second time cut that part up and then put it in where he said it there uh then we have three cards left heroes downfall and that is the destroying a creature or is it removing any creature or planeswalker, planeswalker. Yeah. destroy and then exquisite blood i like this card a lot because it's an enchantment and it's whenever 
people lose life, uh, your opponents lose life, you gain that life. So you don't have to have it more on a heavy of... It doesn't have to be a life gain. It doesn't have to be... It just kind of has you like survive the game. Yeah, because people are going to do damage to each other. That's yep. what they're trying to do. You know? Unless unless you're like already way up there, then you're definitely going to become the target. Target, yeah. They're like, well, we can't damage each other because we're going to gain... You're going to gain too much life. Yeah. So um, that's then, how I would look at it. The last card is Geth Lord of the Vault, and this is a recursion. It can bring back any creature from a graveyard. Doesn't it make yep. it an artifact? No. I don't know if it makes it an artifact, but no. it's... Uh, Black and X, and then you bring converted mana cost of of an artifact or creature back into the battlefield under your control. And then you mill X. Yeah, that's right, because the milling part is pretty sweet, too. Uh, and it has Intimidate. It's a 5-5 five, five for 6. Yeah, this is a pretty sweet card. Um, but, yeah, so it's... Oh, I guess it's not any graveyard. It's an opponent's graveyard. Okay, opponent's graveyard. And it comes under your control tapped. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. So now, oh, it is artifact. Out. Oh, target artifact or creature. I said that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't. Boom. I wasn't listening to you. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> See, I don't lie. I don't lie. You don't do it to me. Either. But the nice thing is, you can do this. Like Larry was saying, you can do this multiple times. So if you're like, oh, I want to take your soul ring that's in your graveyard, you tap one and you know one black and one X, mm-hmm. take the soul ring and then go pick out something else and you take that. So it's kind of sweet in that way. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for our, the BBCs. The B- I don't know if you feel like comfortable with me saying that. It's just, I'm just saying British Broadcasting Channel. It's fine. What, what does that have to do with our core cards for Commander Black? That's where I learned them. <laughs> the UK Let's is huge check in Check your history, Larry, on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> BBCs. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Smith Specs of the Week. Damn it, Larry, just jump in. Hold with on, me. I'm changing the password code on my phone <laughs> so you don't check. <laughs> <laughs> delete history delete, delete history delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> should we try again kirsten check his history <laughs> uh Smith, Smith, of the, of the week. week i tried to go as fast as you were there uh so uh you actually good? we want to start off I-, I wanted to do a little side note to this smith specs of the week um to kind of say something that i learned this week um doing my spec so as you know from previous episodes, I've there's certain cards when sets come out where a commander will make all a group of cards go crazy, and so I like I, to flip coin cards. Flip coin cards. Uh, Saprolines are another one uh, with um, Slimefoot, and then also you have the Elder Dragon um, Arca- Arcades, right? Arcades the. the strategist. strategist. Yeah, I was gonna say saboteur. So that one's making the walls go crazy. So. What I learned this week is like, I as a player, I, I before what was it before Goldfish? Uh, when did we start looking at Goldfish? That was like, oh, uh, it was a couple years ago now. It's got to be four or five years ago, right? Yeah, because we've been specking for three, four years now. Yeah, when we, we actually were, started we were buying. specking after looking at Goldfish. Yeah, and the spikes weren't nearly as dramatic as they are now. Yeah, but so previous to that, I only bought on eBay, and so. That's my my source of where I bought cards because I could get them cheap there and all that. Uh, Even after Goldfish, I didn't really start buying from TCG until probably two years ago, I think, is when I started buying mass quantities of things and it was cheaper Mm -hmm. on TCG. The thing I forgot is that, yeah, Goldfish will say a certain card hasn't spiked, but when you go on eBay... The card spiked there because the cheapest you can get is at whatever, $2, $5, whatever, a card that I bought for $0.30. Cents. But if you go on Goldfish and TCG, it's $0.30 cents there. And so what I figured out this week is like, oh, crap, these are all the cards. I can actually put these on eBay, and I spent $0.25, cents, $0.30 cents on this card. I can sell it for $2 on there. Yeah, that's... It's not a huge profit. It's not what I was hoping for, but those are the ones that I missed on. The hits, I've already made money off of. Mm-hmm. Now I'm trying to get dump the misses. Um, and, but you're still making money. Yeah. I wouldn't cons- call that a miss, but, but it's, it's a it's miss not for a spike. Yeah, it, it's a miss yeah, for a spike, exactly. It didn't get up to $5, $10 on a 20-cent card, but it's still 
tripled, quadrupled. Yeah, if it's two, three, bo- or you know, two, three bucks off of a twenty to thirty cent card. You, yeah, you got a thousand percent return. That's perfectly fine. My my part where I feel like it's a miss is like I can't buy list it to Card Kingdom. Like my oh, fifteen okay, or yeah. ten of them, you know, be like here, here, take my ten of these for 10 bucks a piece where I only spent 50 cents on them or something mm-hmm. like that. So I feel like it's a, cause eBay takes a little bit longer for it to sell. Um, when you it's put not it, as instant gratification. Exactly. Okay. Whereas the buy list, you can go boom, that buy list, it's up to this price, dump all those cards. And that's what I've been doing a little bit lately. And that's actually more of a new thing too, is the buy list. Mm-hmm. But what I realized is a lot of these cards that I felt like were kind of, they weren't going to spike. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get rid of these. And I went on eBay and I just happened to like look and see what the cheapest one on there was. And there was only a couple listings. And each one, at the minimum, was, if I went two bucks, I was the cheapest price and they would move. Well, I listed 50 different, or I listed 20 things. So I filled out my whole, how many I can list in a month. And after this weekend, they were just selling like crazy. Things that are 30 cents on TCG, I was selling for two bucks. And I bought those like because that's and a lot of people are looking at eBay. You're saying, and that's how you used to do it. Yep. And, and so, so it's almost like different markets between eBay, TCG, Goldfish. Um, so, it, like from what I'm taking away from this is like, as a buyer, I don't sell, but as a buyer, I should be looking around at different places. Right. And as a seller, you want to be looking around as well. Yep. Exactly. It, it, the thing you got to realize is that. There's different, there's different players out there. Um, you have your super casual players, super casual kitchen table, which that's what we're kind of like that, but we branch out a little bit more where we do some of the pre-release and all that stuff. And we just did the two at a giant, whatever. Um, but we're more so casual tabletop, whatever kitchen table players. But then you have the people that the only thing that they know where to buy their cards is probably eBay. You know, mm-hmm. that's where they get their cards. They probably have a search engine, so they maybe go, I used to do just eBay and Card Kingdom. I yeah. didn't know about TCG. I only knew Card Kingdom and eBay. As we all know, Card Kingdom lists their prices. They're expensive. For the most part, yeah. higher. They're, they're not Star City Games expensive, but no. Yeah, I used to go, I was Card Kingdom into Channel Fireball. Channel Fireball and Troll and, and Toad. Yeah, I did Troll one. and Toad and uh, Alpha Beta Unlimited, ABU, uh, Abu Games. Uh, I did that for a little bit. I always I did check around, but TCG has really just kind of, you know, really focused where I'm going to buy from for the most part. Yeah. The only time I don't buy from TCG is if they're like really cheap cards. Yeah, that I just it's... I need like a common or uncommon on like fill out a deck, and then I go to Card Kingdom and spend like ten bucks on a bunch of really yeah. cheap cards. And I think that's another thing too is eBay still doesn't charge a tax, uh, whereas TCG oh, does. Um, that might change. Uh, that is going to change. I don't know how soon. But they did just pass saying that states can now tax people um, that are buying and selling stuff online. So that's probably going to start happening on eBay. Um, so that's another thing. I don't know. That's a whole other topic. But um, but yeah, so that was one thing I learned. That if you think that the card hasn't, according to Goldfish, hasn't spiked, check eBay and see what it's actually, what the lowest price is on there. Because it actually might have... Your bottom on eBay is still might be a four hundred percent gain from what you bought the card yeah, from, yeah. and what you want is a profit. And yeah, so I listed, like I said, twenty of them, and I came back to a crap ton of sales that I have to ship out tomorrow. That you know, like I said, they're thirty cents on TCG, but sold it for two bucks. Great. So, anyways, moving into our specs, Some specs of the week. <laughs> we did this so long ago now. Yeah, I know. What's your deal? <laughs> This could have been uh, an old section of just the tips. Just, oh, you like just the tips. And, great, and your BBCs again. It's a great name. For, <laughs> it is uh, just the tips. Just the tips. That, that should have been that section. It, it should have been. That, just we the tips. We can do that. <laughs> We're going to do a segment of just the tips uh, with Adam. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just Adam's, Adam's tip. tips. I have multiple tips. <laughs> oh, impressive. <laughs> You're like the reverse tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. Cindy likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Tickles. There goes our sounder for the week. <laughs> you talking about Sonic the Hedgehog with my split head. All right. Anyways, I don't really have a split head. Uh, my was, first uh, one is... Prince Albert piercing gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a snake tongue. <laughs> so you got a forked penis. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. So I'm continuing with the wall stuff because the wall stuff is starting to, to actually move. Certain things have moved. I talked about last week. There's still more stuff that's going to move. The set hasn't even come out yet, so really this stuff 
will start spiking more as it comes out and people are building the decks. Similar to Slimefoot. Exactly, yep. Uh, so Wall of Junk is a pretty... Sounds s- awful. Yeah. <laughs> Talking Sounds like speaking junk. of junk, <laughs> split <laughs> junk heads. <laughs> We're all Perfect. about all Perfect about the segue. junk. <laughs> uh, this one's it's an artifact. It's for two. It's an 07. When it blocks, return it to owner's hand. So that's not even a big deal if it blocks and whatever. Because you're attacking with a seven seven exactly. For two. And it's a yeah a seven seven for two. You can. It, it's pretty ridiculous. There's only regular copies of this because it's no foils from yeah. Urza's Saga, so there was no foil printings. But this one's at thirty cents. I mean, you can get these for dirt cheap right now, and it's on an increase. It was, you know, it was, it a- was twenty five cents. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, hold on. Well, I mean, if you yeah. look at it, this is a, you know, it's a. I'm not going to do math. It's a certain percent increase. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a certain percent. In, <laughs> you are correct, Lowry. So it's not. Uh, it's, it's below 25. It's so it's 5, 10, and, 50. So it's a. F- it's in between 15 and 20 percent. Yeah, it's a 20 percent increase with five cents yeah. going up. Yeah. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, is, it is a 20 percent. but the thing is the, there is low inventory on this and then the the jump on it is quite a bit on uh, tcg so i would pick this up this is definitely going in my deck for when i build my wall deck because it's a two drop for a freaking could be a seven seven mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. um but yeah uh pick those bad boys up lowry you going to, i like this next card um so i i think if you went and uh checked out primeval titan foils you'd be surprised at the price of them uh, it was reprinted in, in Iconic Masters. <laughs> you, I did that on purpose. Yeah, but he didn't when we were talking about it beforehand. <laughs> so it's been reprinted a couple times, but this card is a mainstay in your Scape Shift decks in Modern. And I, I was kind of thinking about, like, they, they reprinted Azusa Lost But Seeking in Masters 25, and then they, they're just Scape reprinting Shift. Scape Shift in Core 2019. And I was like, well, the other big card there is Primeval Titan. Kind of forgot it was uh, in uh, Iconic Masters. But the foils are actually not that much more expensive than the regulars. So I highly suggest going and getting whatever Primeval Titan uh, foil that you prefer. Uh, Now, the promos are $20, but our regular Titans are sitting around like 8 to 10, and the foils are like 11 to 15. And so it's more than – it's it's really good to go and get the foils – I would say you, mind. The, the Iconic would be a good one to pick up. I mean, you save four or five bucks off of that. But from the M11 or M12, those are at 15. But Iconic Masters, it, was, it didn't get opened a lot because it was a, a set that not a lot of people liked. Yeah. <laughs> so there isn't going to be as many copies, I would think, out there for this. And it's a badass card. I it's, like it's. It is banned in Commander, which is kind of a kind of sucks. But yeah. uh, it's really good in Modern, and it's... It's a fantastic card. If they ever do choose to Gone unban it, holy shit, the this card's, card's gonna, gonna go crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, don't copy me. <laughs> Speaking of this that, this is my card. <laughs> Speaking of that, Lowry did uh, talk about. I think it was either last week or the week before, but um, with unbanned cards and all that stuff, is Stoneforge Mystic. Lowry had said that you know, with, there, there was some steam t- on unbanning. Un- unbanning, yeah, the and cards people up picked to like up 50, on, 60 bucks. Picked up on that. So it's you, all because of Lowry saying. If you it. didn't listen to me last week, shame on you. Yeah, because you could have got listen it. Listen more. You could have got it for twenty, and now it's sixty. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's too bad. But um, we'll see. It's the the unbanning announcement week? is Monday. Yep. So we'll find out tomorrow if people are right or if people are buying sixty dollar cards, and then it's just going to drop down to twenty <laughs> again. Uh, anyways, uh, my next one, continuing with the walls, um, is Sunscape Familiar, and this is from Plane Shift. Now, I'm saying the regulars on this because the foils have already spiked, and that's part of the reason why I'm going for this one, because the f- uh, foils of that jumped to 20. Uh, what this is, it's going to help the, the wall deck here. It's going to be probably used in every single one of these, but it's a one white, one colorless, zero three, but it makes your green and blue spells cost one less to play, so mm-hmm. it's going to help your deck just get out faster um these actually are seeing a spike even on the regulars right now but when i say spike it's going from around 20, 20 cents up to 40 yeah, yeah. that's a 100 percent increase holy crap sell 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 <laughs> sell 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 <laughs> but there's a limited quantity of these i actually picked up a couple more because i was like well this one it's gonna go here it's blowing <laughs> yeah well and and the foils are did you already say this 
the yeah, foils are up to 15? 20. 20. Yeah. Right. yeah See, that's that. that whole page. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, my I world. did it to you, and I did, you did it to me. <laughs> but yeah, so this one, there's a limited supply on TCG right now. I think there's probably only 15 copies left or something, like 15 different sellers left. Yeah, and this so, card is perfect in that deck. Yeah, so um, pick those up as soon as you hear this because that's going to be it's going to be at least a five to ten dollar card I, i'm guessing it's going to settle around seven go right in the middle five to ten dollars seven uh larry next card uh my next one is going to be quill spike uh so this is a creature from shadow more even tide uh, even tide i that's what i said <laughs> <laughs> two colorless and then a hybrid it's black the same block green. though right i mean yeah it's it the same block you got that right. so it's a one one creature and then you can pay uh, a hybrid black or green and remove a minus one minus one counter from a creature and then quill spike gets plus three plus three now this is actually a combo with devoted druid mm -hmm. uh devoted druid um you can tap it for a green untap it to put a minus one minus one counter on it but then you can use that green to make quill spike bigger as bigger big as you bigger, want bigger. you can this is an you can old school yeah. like i remember i had that deck that oh, yeah. i made it with this guy but that was and so but like the reason it's it's just a card that's an undiscovered combo when it comes to constructed mm -hmm. um i don't know if it's good enough but there could be good enough because devoted druid has found a home and people have found out that that's a really good card now if you can figure it out with quill spike as well um quill spike goes up to a ten dollar card and it's yeah. two it's sitting at like 240 right now yeah no, so, and that's the regulars you wouldn't go that you could go for the foils too in that same seven yeah they're in between seven and eight dollars for the foil i don't think either of them are a bad choice if you feel like the combo is good enough uh if not um just make sure you're not on the losing end of like a card spiking yeah in my mind i think this card will eventually spike i i, I can't tell you all it needs is an, one more card to be printed mm -hmm. and then um, kaboom yeah, yeah it, it jumped up with amon ket and that was i think because of uh what's her name the white um that you can't put Minus one, or you take one. Oh, uh, Vizier of yeah, Viz Remedies. Yeah. Yep. So it spiked there up to 13 for the foils, and they, then they now it's do gradually. The thing, yeah. though, between each yeah, other. Yeah, they do. So, but, but I think but, what it is is then you have either combo working. Yeah. So you can either make you infinite that, mana that I, way I or think, infinite mana here. I think with that, the speculation was with Amonkhet being a minus one, minus one counter set, like dealing oh, with yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. And with so that people too. thinking that a card was going to be printed. And then it wasn't really, there was some pieces put to it, but not enough to actually make a deck out of it. And so um, I think if they go back to another minus one, minus one counter deck, I th I think it can be, you know, it has a, a better chance. Because yeah. it went from... Uh, it was three bucks to 15. Yeah. And then it kind of stayed around the lower teens for a while, and it slowly dropped so down. This is the foil. That, that's that kind of where I... I um, my thought process is with that one. I think it has, it has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. I see it. I could see either way on that one though too. I mean, mm -hmm. it just depends on if you. I, I, I'm I'm not going to spend seven eight bucks on a foil quill spike, but I'll pick up. Uh, you know, whenever I see a cheaper version of quill spike regular, like if I see them for a dollar, I, I end up picking up a couple. Yeah. So, I mean, the cheapest they were was about a buck way back yep. before or on Almanket. Before well, when they were a buck, too. I was like, I'll, I'll find them in commons bins because people don't think they're good enough. Mm. And so, I'll, again, Stupid. like I'll go back, I, I find them for you know twenty cents, and I'll I'll pick up every one for that price. Yeah, I've always liked this card since Shadowmore. I mean, even tied. <laughs> uh, I thought you were gonna edit out what I said of Shadow. Shadowmore. What's funny is I was like looking at it <laughs> as you were reading it. I'm like looking at Eventide and then he's like, why did he say, what Shadowmore? You're, you're wrong, Lowry. <laughs> uh, my last spec is Bel Belby's Armor and this is continues to be with the uh, wall stuff. It's a three, uh, it's an artifact for three. Um, you can tap X and tap it. Target creature gets minus X plus X until end of turn. So you can pump your walls up it also has a second effect with if somebody's attacking that's uh, their commander or whatever, you can make their, their power. Yeah. So it has a, it, this is definitely going in that deck as well because this has two ways I can use it. Most of the mm -hmm. time I'm going to be using it to make I'm my walls. game you and play Doran against you. <laughs> Damn you, Scuba Steve! Cut off half that card. Uh, but I'm looking at foils of this, and there is a very limited supply of this one. Um, it says it's at 50 cents, but I was just on TCG and looking to see if there was any way I could pick up any more. I have two copies or three copies of this that I picked up when I was originally mm -hmm. specking. And I was like, well, I, want, I like the even number of 10. Well, 
you can get them for fifty cents, but that's with three dollars shipping. So that they're really oh, around three okay, bucks, yeah. I think. Yep. But you might be able to pick this up on that's other how TCG's sites. TCG's tricky. I know. They... So you, you might be able to pick this up. I think if you get it around a buck right now, you're good because they're going to spike up to five, ten bucks here pretty okay. soon. I think so. Uh, and it's an old set for foils. Nemesis. You, there isn't a lot of foils out there for yeah. that. Older sets like that are, are have very good potential for spiking with foils. Yeah. And then it's just even with the, when the um, core set comes out, all these cards are going to start going up. You know, more and more people are going to buy. Um, the people that are buying right now are people like us invest, like people that are seeing it ahead specking? of time. Yeah. yeah, specking and seeing it. You know, I was like, oh, I want to build that deck. I'm going to get all the pieces. So when it comes out, I'll just get the commander and then my deck's built, you yeah. know. Yeah. But a lot of players are going to wait till the set comes out and then they're like, okay. Did I get it? Let's then I'm get build the, with it. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, Larry, your last spec of the week is a stretch. <laughs> so, but it's it's one that I think has a lot of potential. Wait, you should call this one a wizard duder. It's a wizard duder. <laughs> now, a blood scrivener, which is uh, one colorless, one black. It is a stretch. It is a zombie wizard. It's a two one. Uh, if you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, instead draw two cards and lose one life. Now, I think this could be a very powerful card. Um, but it's it's something that just hasn't found the deck. The foils are a dollar. Yeah. And I think for the potential for a dollar, I, I think um, it's well worth the buy of just at least getting a place I bet you could it. even get them cheaper than that on yeah. TCG. They're so, listed on Goldfish for a dollar, but like, I bet you can I've, buy I've seen people quantities. trying to build decks with it, and it... Uh, it, they, they're at least interesting decks. So like Madness decks with like Tabalt the Blood, blood Feed mm. like the worst Planeswalker. Yeah. But uh, it, it kind of works with it too. Like if you can go, uh, um, you know, get rid of your hand and then be able to just draw, draw cards two. and get that advantage mm -hmm. while still being able to get advantage without a hand. Mm -hmm. um, it It's a unique card, I think. Um, but think of uh dark confidant which is like an 80 dollar card right now it's an automatic thing but you're losing the life of converted mana cost this is just one life if you can get that condition to work mm -hmm. so um i think it's well worth it at a dollar yeah and, and like i said you could probably get it cheaper than that too if you bought mass sure. quantities yeah, of it yeah. um yeah it's not it's not a very big risk so a yeah. dollar's not much you know yeah. so that's pretty good uh, um, for a p potential big reward, yeah. you know, if somebody does build the deck or get it to actually work with something, they could. Should Should I reveal my peed on commander? Oh yeah, or do did, we want to? Because you were, you peed on a lot of commanders. Yeah, I did. Uh, so I was just spraying all over the place. Well, we're at the end of the episode, but one thing we are going to kind of let you guys know is. We aren't doing um, dueling boxes for the core, core set. set 2019. We have a lot of the cards. Um, yeah, just just being a reprint set. Like I understand that, like. Hey, Battle Bond was kind of a reprint set, but they had a bunch of new ones. It's similar to Core Set, but it had a lot, a lot of, of different cards unique that we stuff yeah. in there. And the land, and it, when we were discussing this week if we were going to buy it, uh, originally we were going to split a box, and I was like, well, that's not really dueling boxes. It's more of battling our own boxes against each other. Yes, one box. It's yeah, I, I, I guess masturbation one thing have, boxes because it would just be just one say? person. One. Master wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because it's only one <laughs> one box, you know. <laughs> but there's two of us. I, I don't think it's <laughs> yeah. Uh, two guys, one box. That's gross. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Name of the episode. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it too. I like look for things in this episode, and then I'm like, up. Oh. That'll get the clicks. One, one, one thing, <laughs> one thing that I look for, like when, when, when I want to buy a, uh, when I want to buy cards or buy a box, is if the only cards I want out of there is are mythics, then it's the, it's not worth it. Yeah, and I think that's what we were discussing is like if there is a good rare set of lands, or, you know, cycle of lands. Yeah, I think that makes it a then I'd be like, all right, go at it. Let's let's get this because whatever shock lands are here, or whatever, yeah, that, you know, which are probably potentially coming in the, the next fall. one. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, well, we know what to expect in the fall. That that seems like something that we want to save our money for, and we uh, might double dueling boxes of that one. You know, yeah, because it's, it's on good enough. Set. Yeah, it, potentially. We both like Shockland. So so we're not going to do that. Dueling boxes. We're, we're trying to do the pre-release, but I don't think it's possible yeah. at this point. We both, it's just that balancing thing. The, yeah. We figured, we were like, all right, let's try to do it. And I was like, well, the only day I can do it is Friday. And then at I'm midnight, up until 4 o'clock in the morning. And then that you get that home and the kids are up. The whole and... weekend. Yeah. So 
we might not do that. It's not that we don't want to. It's just uh, the yeah, core I think sets the are is always core sets are, are good sets, but when you have a lot of the cards, they become tough to for us to yeah. want to invest them. And that's typically when we've we've always bought boxes. A lot of times we would. And I think we always skip the core sets. Yep, and we, that was always one we skipped. I don't think we've ever bought um, core set boxes. Mm, I can't really think of I, them. Yeah, it, if we did, we split them. Yeah. So. So that, that just, so just a heads up on that. We won't have dueling boxes on that, but we might try to figure out another video content that we can add between here and the next set, which will be three months out. So if we can figure out something, I don't know. We'll figure out something. Uh-huh. 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 You're like, why are you saying this, Adam? Stop yeah. adding more. Stop promising <laughs> stuff that you can't deliver on. <laughs> you mean like making my proxies and stuff? Yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to figure why out how to do Why haven't you gotten that video out? Because <laughs> it's so hard to do all this stuff. <laughs> Life is crazy. Uh, so, and then, yeah, why don't you say what your Pete on Commander, I don't know when we'll be revealing those yet, but. The decks? Yeah. Uh, well. well uh, so I'm going to, I picked Vivictus Asmati, the Dyer. Um, I, I think I have a pretty good slash unique idea. It's actually something that I've wanted to work with for a while, but there hasn't been anything that, um, really. Uh, Did what you wanted. Helps it out. But mm-hmm. this actually kind of works in that realm it's it's a little janky but um it hey feels like that's a, the fun part about this yeah yeah so we'll see well it, mine's it gonna be, be an really effing powerful. wall deck <laughs> yeah i'm gonna get ran over before i get to do anything i see what i'm trying to do with the wall deck is trying to make it not like every other wall deck where it's just like all walls 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 i'm trying to figure out another angle that i can use so that yeah. that's what i'm trying to work out right now is my secondary angle i want to do kind of have a thought of milling in a way but i don't know mm-hmm. if i want to go that route or not it's my mm-hmm. secondary thing so we'll see uh, but yeah that's in the future coming here soon we both have our decks picked out peed on them peed yeah, all over them <laughs> soaking wet yeah so and we still gotta play i, I want to play the the battle bond ones a little bit more we've only got that one night of yeah, playing them i so, did really enjoy that uh i didn't get a good battle with you that game was kind of the no you know. yeah we both sucked and then yeah. the ready player whomped us yeah so uh, yeah, uh, I think that's what we're aiming for, and I hope you guys are uh, kind of excited about listening to us playing because that's amazing. I know that <laughs> <laughs> listening to us playing, yeah, playing with what? Well, B- listening BBCs? to us how we played with the decks. There we go. <laughs> it's like we're playing right now. Yeah, you guys don't know when we do this podcast, we're actually playing a game playing at the same yeah. time. <laughs> it's we're geniuses. Yeah. Uh, so no. that'll do it for episode 20. Yeah, thanks for um, listening. Oh, I, that was too early. Sorry, yeah, we, we got to do our sign-offs here. <laughs> right. uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Commander Smiths. And you can uh, email us, uh, or not, at Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> or just let us keep emailing back and forth about our show notes. That's Commander totally Smiths fine. at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> they, we just don't have any questions people don't need it they, we, they we get it all from us so exactly. well that There's they're no like wow this that is uh, amazing I, I feel like a uh, high school teacher <laughs> yeah. any questions <laughs> no silence hmm. <laughs> did you hear anything i just said <laughs> no <laughs> hmm. nudes all right uh and then you can also subscribe to us on youtube we got a couple like i said this last week we got a few subscribers yeah, you, you can find us uh well if you found if you're listening you've already found us never mind yeah i was gonna toss that in there I was like, no. <laughs> you could find us. you could find us by looking on the internet <laughs> uh Google. all right yep that should do it for this episode lowercase g, lowercase g for yeah, the google the big case g is not god. your bbc's there's god and then there's google <laughs> Big case, lowercase g. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, that'll do it for episode 20. We will uh, see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>